Hi everyone, today I am here to talk about the book All About Love. All About Love is written by Bell Hooks. And I um, came across this book, I think just a while ago, it was on, I think it was Pinterest and I saw an excerpt from that book. And so I knew from then that I really wanted to read it. I don't have the physical copy but I'm reading it online on this app called Scribd, S-C-R-I-B-D. And reading this book, it's just, it's just, I just connect with it so much um, right now in my life. Um, you should read about the author. I don't think she ever married. I don't want to misspeak, but I don't think she ever married. Um, and I recently was listening to a song. It was just a random song that I clicked on on. Did I click on it or did it just pop up? I don't remember. On Apple Music and he talked about the book. He talked about this book right now that I am reading and that I'm just loving so much. So I, in the book, it talks about love, obviously. And um, I'm in the part now where it's talking about how if you really want love, it's important to understand how to love yourself. Like you can't desire love from a partner um, and like romance and things if you don't really know how to do it yourself first. I mean, that's like the best way. At least you know that you'll be healed um, when you have practiced self-love before pursuing a romantic relationship. And I want to read a few, like I'm going to read two excerpts. I have them pulled up on my laptop right here. I'm going to read two excerpts. So the first part says, one of the best guides to how to be self-loving is to give ourselves the love we are often dreaming about receiving from others. That sentence just resonates so much with me. And on my story, I asked you guys, how do y'all show self-love? How do you practice self-love? We're going to get into that. Okay. Then it goes on. There was a time when I felt lousy about my 40, my over 40 body, saw myself as too fat, too this or too that. Yet I fantasized about finding a lover who would give me the gift of being loved as I am. And with that, I, I kind of realized, wow, and we all have imperfections. We all have things that we don't like about ourselves that we choose not to love because love is a choice. We choose not to love them, yet we want someone else to love and accept that, accept that part of us. How is that logical? We have to all accept our imperfections. Um, and we can't choose our imperfections. A lot of times there's things that we don't like about ourselves, whether that's physically, mentally, or spiritually or financially that we just cannot control, but you can choose to still love love that part of yourself. That that way, when you get into dating and finding a romantic partner, that person is gonna love you just like how you love yourself. No one that you meet, no one that you try to date or be with is gonna love you any higher than the love that you already have for yourself. So you're setting the standard. So then it goes on to talk about self-love. And I post this part of my story. It says, in an ideal world, we would all learn in childhood to love ourselves. How many of you guys in your childhood learned anything about self-love, about self-acceptance, about having high self-esteem, about praising yourself and about uplifting yourself? Let me know, because I definitely know that is not something that I remember learning about in my childhood. I mean, I had love a loving family. I had loving family members. I had love around me, but self-love was not something that was just ingrained in my mind. And I didn't really learn how to do that until just recently on my journey. It continues. We would grow being secure in our worth and value. Again, something I haven't learned in my 20s. Spreading love wherever we went. Letting our light shine. If we did not learn self-love in youth, there is still hope. And I think that is so important. A lot of us just in our childhood, we don't focus on self-love. Our, our parents are too busy you know, they're just raising us based on how they were raised. And so that, that's why I think it's important to bring the conversation of self-love to the table. It's not talked about. And this self-love goes for men and women. It doesn't matter who you are. It's important to show love to yourself. Um, And another thing I wanted to say was, it says when we would grow being secure in our worth and value. And when I just think about, I always just think about kind of the situations that I've been through in life that, in the moment may have seemed negative or bad or just like they were tearing me down so much. But then in hindsight, I realized, okay, if it weren't for this scenario, like the situation probably did break me down pretty badly. It probably did 
lower my self-esteem and had me questioning my worth and my value but it's like I kind of needed that in order to to practice self-love and understand how valuable I am and how worthy I am and love myself more so when I read that I really wanted to bring the conversation of self-love to the table so I immediately reflected and thought okay what what are some ways that I show self-love in my own life? How do I practice self-love? And I immediately, you know, when I think of ourselves, I think of us in three parts, the mind, body, and the spirit. So I broke it down. How do I show love to my mind, my body, and my spirit? And I also had to ask myself, what is self-love? <laughs> and it took me a minute to really come up with an answer. I'm just in the mirror, like, okay, Nicole, like, what is self-love? And I'm thinking about, okay, self-love versus self-care but when I think of self-love I really do think of kind of how it was defined in the book about kind of that romantic love that you would want from a partner but understanding that that is something that you can also give to yourself or try to give to yourself and love in a spiritual sense as well as love being patient love being kind love not keeping a record of wrong the way that God loves you is the way that you should the way that you should embody love and show love to yourself and love to others so a few ways for me that I practice self-love, let me think. Okay, the first thing that came to mind for me was definitely forgiveness. Forgiveness is one of my words for the new year, 2023. But I think a great way to show love and compassion to yourself is for is forgive forgiveness. Forgiving yourself and forgiving others. Forgiving myself for being in situations that I know I should have not have been in. Forgiving those times where I didn't trust myself like I should have. I didn't trust God the way I should have. I didn't trust my intuition. Forgiveness. Another thing that I am really big on are affirmations. Affirmations are definitely more mental. Um, just telling myself every day. I have it written on my mirror. I have affirmations on my mirror. I have affirmations that I read in the morning and at nighttime, just really setting the tone for the day. And that is self-love because that is something that I could definitely just skip. I could just not do it. But I love myself. <laughs> And that's what I think, that's what I think too, you know, when it comes to a partner, I think it would be good to like have a partner that even though they may not want to do something with you or like do an activity that you love or something with you at that point in time, but they, their love for you overrides their desire not to do it. They still do it. That's, that's what love is. Um, the last thing that I think really for me, the way that I practice self-love is that a lot of times I can let fears and doubts and insecurities kind of hold me back. And so I try not to do that. So I don't let those hold me back. And it is hard. So anything that I really am trying to get good at or really am passionate about, if I tell myself I'm going to do, do it, I do it. Even if leading up to the point I don't want to do it anymore. Um, but even with this, with this Instagram live, I knew I wanted to do this live for a while. Ever since I started reading that book. I was like, I want to do a live, but then these doubt, these thoughts in the back of my mind were like, don't do it, don't do it. Who cares? You know, this is like, whatever. But I said, no, I'm still going to do it. Like, I'm not, like, because I know that that's not love. That's not even coming from a loving place. Those those thoughts. Um, there's been times where I've just wanted to, when I commit to myself that I want to do something, that I want to go somewhere. But then let's say, like, something may happen or a, a friend may fall through with that. I don't let that ruin my mood. I say, no, I still want to go. I'm going to do it. So, and that's spiritual too. So those are ways that I practice self-love. Um, another one, since I didn't really talk about a physical one for the body, I would say recently, and I was talking to a friend about this, but I have been, I have become, I have been becoming very cognizant of what I eat and not just eating anything. Now, I never really was that person to just eat anything because I don't have an eat anything appetite anyway, but I'm very aware now of making sure that I'm eating healthy and making sure that I'm also exercising because now is the time to exercise when you're young and healthy so that you can stay healthy maybe not always young but so that your body is just always you know as healthy as possible I understand the value of moving my body every day um you know for at least 30 minutes drinking my water taking my vitamins doing my skincare that's another thing that require self-love it's like for me my skin sometimes it doesn't it has a mind of its own and I could easily just give up and say I don't want to do this 10 step skincare routine twice a day it's too much like I'm not seeing any progress in my skin but no I believe that my skin will be better if I just show love to it 
and I and I want and I, and I think I I deserve like okay when I'm talking about clear skin I think clear skin actually has a it's like a sim it's like it's a sim it's a symbolism because when we're babies <laughs> this is so off topic but I noticed that when we're babies when we're young nobody has acne but obviously you get acne throughout your adulthood you can get adult acne or as a teenager because of hormones and things but then I see adults with clear beautiful skin and I'm like okay like if, if at one point in my life I had clear skin I can have it again why would I why am I, why would I settle for having skin with marks on it all the time when I know that I I can have clear skin because I had it once in my life so that's why I don't give up on clearing my skin I want to also read over what some of you guys posted on my questions tab about ways that you practice self-love okay let's see because i was kind of hoping that guys also answer because i don't want people to think self-love is just for women no it's for guys too so okay so someone said that the way they practice self-love is by eating, sleeping, reading, and doing facials, which sounds really fun. A lot of that sounds that like that's more for the body, but a lot of these, you know, are intertwined. This is good. I like that. Facials are definitely great self-care. Oh. Okay. Meditate, journal, and affirmations. Yes, journaling is a great way to just get those thoughts out somehow. It's never really worked for me um, unless I am reading a book or going through an exercise where they literally say, okay, take out your pen and paper and write an example. Right now, I'm also reading the um, self-mastery and there's a forgiveness section and it literally says like get a journal and write down anybody in your life that ever hurt you and it's an exercise that you go through to forgive them actually yeah i bought a journal just to practice forgiveness this is from target it's like i haven't started yet but i have a journal for a lot of stuff but this is going to be specifically for forgiveness another thing that it talks about in that book who is that book by hold on Yeah, by Don Miguel Ruiz. Um, Mastery of Self. Um, another thing that that book talks about is the, the parasite versus the ally in terms of your subconscious psychology and how you're thinking. And I did, I did do a journaling exercise with that where it basically asks you to reflect on a situation in your life that you may have looking back on the situation you think of it as very negative and that it kind of made you unhappy and led to some very negative life outcomes but the exercise is to literally write rewrite that down and like make it into something positive and look at what you gain from that situation instead of what you are lacking from that situation because lack and gain abundance and scarcity are all just have to do with your mindset is all how you look at it and when I read about that I was just thinking imagine if we all had this mindset Imagine if we all looked at our situations like this, it would just make us like not so bitter all the time. And that's part of being on the healing journey. Affirmations. Yes, I talked about that. Those are great for the spirit. Um, and she in the book, it actually talks about she talks about how she kind of thought affirmations were a little bit corny, a little bit cheesy, but that after a while it worked. They work. Seriously, it really does work. <laughs> Okay, another response was by doing what I told myself I would do, but also give myself grace and rest when needed. And I love that because I've mentioned before, when you say you're going to do something, do it. When you tell yourself, I'm going to get up in 10 minutes and go work out, I'm going to get up in 10 minutes and wash the dishes, do it. And I have had to 
try to train myself to to just do it like Nike and not think about it so much because when I think about what I have to do then I'll just go into a spiral of thinking 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 which just gets so draining and nothing gets done it leads to paralysis analysis paralysis so when you say you're gonna do something do it because that'll affect how you show up in all areas of your life how you do one thing is how you do everything so try your best to stick to your word and it's also important like this person said to give grace and rest when needed and to say okay i forgive myself for not doing what i said i was going to do maybe i need to take a step back and rest and i'm not going to judge myself for that i'm going to understand that i'm a human with thoughts and feelings i'm trying to understand these things and digest these things and if i need to rest right now then that's fine and imagine like listen to how what i just said it's love it's self-love but it's also love that can be applied to a romantic relationship which is why it's important to understand this before, you know, entering a romantic relationship. Okay. I think... Okay, we have this one. Self-date nights. Okay. I'm going to respond to this person. But my thing is, I want to know, because this came from a guy. What does a self-date night look like for a guy? I'm kind of curious about that. Like, what do y'all <laughs> like? <laughs> I mean, I never knew that. I've never known of a guy to date themselves, which is kind of bad. We need to start normalizing that. But I guess, you know, just a guy taking himself out to dinner, taking himself out to a bar to watch a game. You know, you don't always have to sit in the house and like do whatever you, you do. But, you know, because I, I think when you as a man or a woman, when you get in the practice of doing what it is that you want, like if you want to be taken out on dates, or if you want to take women on dates one day in your life, just practice going out and doing it by yourself because you may find that person while you're doing that. Um, I, I recently, I'll just end with this, guys. I'm about to wrap this up. But I recently saw a TikTok of a girl talking about how she manifested her dream man and how when she was single, she would kind of do the things that she wanted to do in a relationship. So she would take herself out to these nice dinners and travel and just kind of live you know her best single life but she wasn't just sitting in the house she was doing stuff that she would want to do in a relationship and i thought that was very enlightening and i i just think of like for me little ways that i used to kind of romanticize my life as they call it i used to i used to be big into buying flowers like i would buy flowers but i don't do that anymore they die too fast and i don't like the, the vases that i have i want to get some nice little roses but sidetrack anyway so i have a few little 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 ways that i kind of practice this like self romanticizing my life so i'm not just going through the motions but making sure that i'm really feeling good and like just really appreciating the moments and appreciating my life instead of thinking i wish i had this i wish i had that but instead of just appreciating what i have i do very little things i i, I do put effort into the way i look even if i'm not really going to be seeing anyone I still try to, like I said, keep up with my skincare. Maybe I, I've been trying the whole lash thing, but y'all let me know how y'all do that. Um, you know, making sure that I'm dressed in a way that truly makes me happy and makes me feel good. I do. I like candles. Now, the only thing I have a candle right here that I light uh, all the time, but you know, and it's yeah, it burns quickly, <laughs> but it's fun. I mean, it just adds a little something. And another thing that I do, I drink a lot of water. I've always drank a lot of water, but like I mentioned before, I'm trying to be more aware of that and more cognizant. So I don't drink anything else really besides water. But, you know, sometimes I add a little bit of, you know, some lemon slices in the water just to, just to like spice it up, make it fun, make it memorable. <laughs> um, and that's actually healthy to add lemon slices to your water in the water like multiple slices not just one at the top but in doing that stuff actually really lifts my mood it really increases my feelings of gratitude and it just it overall just makes me feel great honestly so i really hope that you guys enjoyed this little quick candid discussion on self-love i recommend reading the book all about love i can't wait till i get my physical copy because it's such a cute book um and just remember to, to show show self-love what is what is one way that you can practice self-love in the mind the body or the spirit 
is it exercising is it reading more is it meditating is it praying is it connecting with 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 spirit with god is it affirmations what is it because if you're sitting around and you're you're not in a relationship but you want someone like she said in the book you want someone to love you you want someone to accept your flaw like and all these things that is not that is not realistic like i said it's not logical it's not realistic to have these expectations for someone else to treat you a certain way in a relationship if you don't already have that mindset or that love of yourself to treat yourself that way anyway you don't even de- you don't even think that you deserve that love from yourself so what makes you think that someone is going to think that you deserve that love from them because you don't and people can kind of tell too when you when you don't love yourself you can tell people can tell certain types of people tell that you know when they're you know, when they have the but they don't have good intentions they can tell that you won't be because when you love yourself you have you have standards and you have boundaries and you know when to say no but if you don't have self-love you're just like whatever you're letting anything fly and that's that's kind of what we're trying to prevent here we don't want just random relationships random you know accepting random behavior no so please i encourage you love yourself it is not selfish at all it is very necessary and thank y'all for watching bye